Cam Alexander of Thomson Reuters GFMS has joined me now at the IPMI conference here in Phoenix, Arizona. Cam, you're a speaker here at the conference. Thanks for sitting down with me. Thanks very much. Nice to be with you. So, Cam, last time I spoke with uh, one of your other colleagues from the firm, we were, or you were looking at $30 silver in May, and you expected industrial usage of silver to hit a three-year high. Mm -hmm. Obviously, things have changed a bit. Yeah, I and mean, we're still expecting to see industrial fabrication increase this year. Um, they will probably see the, the rise probably only down to sort of three or four percent. Um, so it still will be a three-year high. Um, but in terms of price, we've, we've lowered our expectations slightly after the mid-April correction. Um, we'll probably see prices ranging around about twenty-four to twenty-five dollars an ounce this year. Cam, what do you think is really weighing on silver? Obviously, really suffering right now. Do you think it's following gold's lead, or there's more at play? I think that's pretty much the main story. I think we've seen a very um, large liquidations from the gold side, and that's having a big impact on the silver side as well. Um, on the fundamental side, we're seeing, we are seeing you know, a stronger jewellery side, we're seeing a stronger um, industrial demand, um, but mine supplies continue to, to grow stronger, so we are seeing that, 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 that extra surplus increase. Okay. Uh, we're also seeing that the shorter term in, uh, investors uh, in silver are not as interested in the metal. What would it take for a turnaround to happen? What would it take for investors to like silver again? Uh, I, think, I think it comes back to the US economy story. I think if people at the moment are looking to assets that are potentially growing at a faster rate, seeing a lot of outflows back to the equities markets, which has been very strong this year, I think if we start seeing some um, volatility in the equity markets, some people will then start putting their assets back in more of a safe haven asset. So you've revised your silver forecast. Have you revised your, your gold? Yeah, indeed, we've lowered our gold price forecast as well. Um, I think we're going to see, I think we're going to see prices move slightly higher in the second half of the year than where we're currently at now. Um, though that's probably going to be fairly short-lived as we expect prices to retreat again in 2014. Cam, you're based in Australia, and I know you deal a lot with the Chinese market, and you focus on gold as well. Let's talk about that a second. What are you seeing uh, in terms of gold demand emerging from China? Is it still strong? It's very strong. We've seen very strong inflows into the country of the recent months. It tended to tail off slightly in sort of May. We had that very strong activity in April. Um, back in, in the, then towards sort of the later stages of June, we've seen it pick up a very strong demand again as these lower prices have encouraged more, uh, more purchasing. Well, we recently saw the, the emergence of two new ETPs in China, as well as a Deutsche Bank launching a, a gold vault that can hold up to 200 tons of gold in Singapore. Do you think this is indicative of the appetite for the metals in Asia? Yeah, look, we've seen a very strong demand this year on the physical side, and particularly Thailand's been leading the charge there, as well as obviously China. Um, all of the banks, all of the players in, into the Chinese market are now posi positioning itself into Singapore so they can launch supply into that market really quickly. Um, yeah, I think it's becoming a very important part of the, the part of the world in terms of the gold market. Okay, so just to sum up again, your forecast over a one-year term, or this is until end of 2013 for silver and gold, Cam? Look, I think we're going to see prices probably edge up higher on silver. I think we may be closer to the low at the moment. Uh, we may have seen the market slightly overdone uh, of the sell-off, so we could see prices edge higher. Uh, we have an average for the full year at around 24, 40 or so, I think we can say. And on the gold price, we're looking at probably slower, lower prices, but um, on an average, probably around about for 14.50, I think. Right, which are still relatively high prices, right, Cam? I think. Absolutely. I think. I think we've. I think we're going to see prices edge higher the second half of this year. I think the. I think the, the, the concerns out there about the economy are still real. I think there's been a lot of talk about the economy back on track, particularly in the U.S. And I think that might might be overplayed. Okay. So I think we could see prices probably edge higher with some concerns still in the economy. Right. So do you think there was just an overreaction to that last FOMC meeting we saw? Yeah, I think, I mean, it wasn't a great deal put out there in the meeting. Um, and I think a lot of people read into a lot more than there probably was. Okay. And so I think there's been a slightly over, overreaction in the initial stages. And I think we will see prices just edge higher. Cam, thanks for your thoughts today. Enjoy the uh, beautiful weather here. Thanks very much. And thanks for watching our continuous coverage from the IPMI here in Phoenix, Arizona. We'll have more for you on kitco.com. Thanks for watching.